What's up guys, your boy Marquine Alexander, and today on Auto Nation, I got Mr. Cornelius Shackford. What's going on, bro? Oh, what's going on, brother, man? Great day to be alive. It is, it is, man. It's been an exciting day. You had your first podcast today. Yeah, uh, sir. What's the name of your podcast? Uh, next Up. Uh, what is it going to consist of, bro? Uh, it's, it's a mixture of uh, entrepreneurships and uh, just uh, dropping gems, uh, no, no, um, no particular field in particular, um, you know, catering to young athletes, uh, real estate, uh, you know, just starting businesses in general, just, you know, kind of dropping some jewels and knowledge and just being encouraged into the world and trying to be, uh, trying to be fruitful, trying to, you know, get people uh, what they need in their journey and just, uh, you know, trying to be of service. Right. And who did you have on the first episode today? Uh, today we had Josh Aubrey, man. Uh, uh, Formula uh, NFL player uh, and uh, real estate investor out in the Dallas Dallas Fort Worth area. Uh, man, uh, great guy. Was excited to you know uh, have him on. Uh, great content, and I, I felt like that uh, he enjoyed himself, and, uh, and I feel like the audience will definitely get a lot from from Josh. When can uh, where can we watch your uh, podcast? Uh, YouTube. Uh, you can find us on YouTube at uh, at Shack Solid. And, uh, or you can just put my name in, Cornelius Shaga for it. Instagram and Facebook, both at Shaq Solid. So uh, great content. Uh, subscribe to us, follow us, uh, share it, like it. Uh, we would love to have you in the audience. Where are you from, bro? I'm from Tyler, Texas, man. Uh, right outside of Dallas, about an, an hour and a half east. Um, you know, small town, but uh, humble beginnings, man. Uh, just um, a, 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 a kid, you know, being raised by a single mom. Um, you know, two brothers and sisters, uh, just real humble beginnings, man. You right. know, where are you? Uh, are you the oldest, or where do you fall? I'm actually the oldest. Okay. So you know, growing up, you know, <laughs> everybody looking to me. You know, yeah. none of us had a father, so I kind of naturally assumed some of those roles. And um, you know, just being of somebody that was kind of, uh, kind of creating the way uh, in that path. You know, trying to find you know the right things to do the right things not to do i was always being watched and that was something that you know i didn't take lightly it was a responsibility that you know, i i i actually kind of grew fond of okay uh out here in tyler there's uh red red nation and cujo which one did you go to i actually went to cujo you know okay. john tyler high school uh graduate of 06 uh you know shout out to my 06 guys out there uh and and and, and ladies uh, when I say guys, I mean everybody, but uh, man, uh, graduated 06 and, and, and it really kind of uh, molded me, molded me, you know, the exposure, uh, the things that I was exposed to, uh, the things that, you know, I grew up with, the friends, my environment uh, kind of shaped me and, you know, kind of had some experiences early to where uh, I made some decisions early, uh, what I was going to do, what I wasn't what I was not going to do um, and kind of really uh, became a solid, you know, piece of my foundation. Uh, at, at John Tyler High School, man. Was uh, Coach Allen still there when you were there? No, Coach Allen was just leaving. When I when I was in eighth grade, it was his last year uh, at John Tyler. So okay. I, I kind of came in under Coach Ratcliffe uh, okay. Okay. My, my freshman year. So All right, cool, cool, cool. just missed him. Did you have any notable alumni from your class that went on to bigger and better things that you keep in contact with or that you know of? Yeah, absolutely. I um, have a couple guys. Uh, one, Kendall Hunter, he graduated a year behind me, but we played on the same team um, for three years. <laughs> I believe he was on varsity as a, as a sophomore. Um, but um, let's see, who else? Uh, Jeremy Lane uh, played for Seahawks, the cornerback. Uh, he I, I also was a year younger than me. Um, I think that that's pretty much that's, it that ended up, end up right? making it to the league. Um, yeah, Kendall, Kendall. Uh, Kendall actually uh, worked uh, with me on uh, in the oil field, so I, I Oh, yeah. And then uh, Jeremy, Jeremy with the Legion of Boom up there with, right. uh, with all them boys. That, that's that's pretty cool, man. A lot, a lot of talent, uh, talent comes out of John Tyler. Nothing against Robert Lee. It's just, you know, most yeah. of my family's gone to JT over the years. Now, coming out of high school, where, uh, where did you do? Did you go to college? Did you have dreams and aspirations to be in the NFL or? Man, absolutely, man. When I came out, um, we kind of back up a little bit because my dream started early, you know. Okay. Um, I, I was a kid that, you know, wasn't exposed to a lot of things on on the entrepreneur side of things. And so all I seen, you know, um, as a kid, making observations is, 
you know, NFL, you know, being a college ball player and then going on to the NFL, that's how I felt like, you know, I can take care of my family, take care of my mom and, um, you know, be a, a service for her and thank her for all the things that she's done for me. So early on, I developed that that dream of of going to the NFL and, 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 and just taking care of my family. Uh, but not everything goes as planned, as you know, you know, yes. you just live and you learn. And, um, you know, by the time I want to play running back. And uh, even in Pop Warner, I played left guard, offensive line, right. And so uh, it was, it was. I was getting crushed. I was getting crushed early. Was you were you kind of a chubby kid or? I was average size. I was more. I was one of the, the bigger kids, but you know, I wasn't like chubby or anything. I, it was just kids on the team that was flat out faster than me. Uh, matter of fact, Teddy Williams was another guy that graduated with me that I played play with me. He just retired, but his dad was our coach. And Teddy played, you know, running back. Teddy's always been fast, so you know he played running back. So you know, along with a couple other guys, but I just wasn't, you know, the fastest, one of the faster kids. And so I had to play on the line, I had to block for those guys. And so I didn't really start getting my shot to play running back until about seventh grade. And I was literally like the third stream, and then like you know, a couple guys flunked out, and I started. <laughs> right, so I didn't even really, you know, beat those guys out. They kind of took care of themselves, but. It really gave me a taste of what I really wanted to do. And even then, I still wasn't the best. I still wasn't the fastest, the biggest or anything. So I just had to work my way to you know, who I wanted to be. So when I got to high school, I kind of, um, I, I begged my mom to start taking me, you know, during the summer early. And I'm glad I did. And I was persistent with it. And finally, she took me. And uh, I got up there, and it was a couple guys working out consistently on a daily basis. And their name was Aaron Ross and Tim Crowder. Both went to the league, and you know, both was committed to University of Texas. And what that allowed me to see was uh, the grind on a whole different level, right? Uh, you know, th these guys were like, you know, going to the places that you want to go to. You know, they was on the right path, and literally day in and day out, they were the only two in the in the, in the weight room. And so, as a kid coming in not knowing anything. Uh, I just start watching them, you know, just behind the scenes. I set up a little set over, a station over here, and I just kind of watched what they did and the way that they work. And when they moved outside, like I just kind of went behind the bleachers and just kind of watched their drills. And um, and that's really where you know the training really helped me because like that's when I realized that I had a photographic memory. You were soaking it all in. I was soaking it in, and then so uh, when I would go home. I remember those drills. I put them here and I go home and I didn't have cones and we and my mom, she didn't know where to get them or whatever. So I just found big rocks and I placed them where I felt like they had them. And uh, I ran the drills that I seen them do every day. So every day I went home and I just imitated and mimicked what they did every day. So now like, you know, going into the training and what I do now for other kids, um, I can, I can remember everything. It kind of prepared me, and it helped me with test taking and a lot of stuff. And I learned that going into my freshman year in college. But I got to see two guys really honor their craft and uh, you know lay a blueprint down on really how to get to where they were going. 